The U.S. economy has been doing fairly well relative to the rest of the world, and some think it can keep on going in 2017. I'm Jack Otter, editor of Barron's.com. I'm here with Abby Joseph Cohen, senior investment strategist at Goldman Sachs and longtime roundtable member. You described the U.S. economy as a super tanker, uh, which was a nice description. Uh, can you explain that and where you see that super tanker going in the, in the bigger global picture? Certainly, Jack. This is an economy that may not be the fastest vessel, <laughs> but it's very hard to knock off its course. And we think that in 2017, economic growth will be somewhere between 2 and 2.5%. Two and We're starting the year off well. The labor markets are creating new jobs. Wages are going up. And we think the profit reports will be good. And there's a lot of optimism reflected in the markets that changes the Trump administration hopes to bring will boost that growth farther, but you don't think it's much past two and a half, three? Uh, we have not dramatically changed our GDP forecast or most of our forecasts for 2017 because many of the policy prescriptions that the Trump administration incoming is talking about will take some time to get passed or to implement. And so looking uh, overseas, um, I think you are somewhat bullish on Japan. You don't see great growth in Europe. Europe has been an enormous disappointment for so many. This is a, an economy for the region that has been generating growth just about 1%, sometimes a little bit better, as it will be in 2017. But the long-term sustainable growth rate for Europe is just about 1%, which is less than half that of the U.S. Japan is a somewhat more attractive situation. They're benefiting from the stimulative policies implemented by uh, Mr. Abe. And we also see that flow of funds from Japan, which have been negative for so long, have now stopped. And we're seeing a reversal of that. There seems to be more interest in Japan. Profits are rising. And the valuation is not bad. That's interesting because in some ways Europe and Japan look similar. They both have aging demographics. Both have been trying this insanely aggressive stimulus. Has Japan done something a little better than Europe? Well, Japan has been at this longer. <laughs> um, and they discovered. Um, years earlier that relying just on monetary policy doesn't do the trick. You know, there are several countries in Europe that have negative interest rates, as does Japan. But what Japan has done under Abenomics is to look at real structural reform, including structural reform in the labor markets and doing other things to encourage investment and consumption. Uh, so in this environment, um, you're not a stock picker, but you have many colleagues at Goldman Sachs mm -hmm. who are. What uh, investments, let's, can you give us a stock perhaps that they are recommending? Certainly, I'm happy to do that. Um, what we're seeing is that there was an enormous movement, obviously, uh, in the U.S. stock market in the second half of 2016. But some sectors got left behind, and one of those was health care. Uh, and even within the health care sector, we see that some stocks notably underperformed others. One that our analyst likes at this point is Eli Lilly. It's a well-known company, a well-known name. What we think is happening, though, is there's a very interesting product pipeline. And within the next few years, new products may comprise something like 40 to 45 percent of their revenues, which is really quite important in terms of what that might mean uh, for pricing flexibility and, of course, profit margin. Yeah, that's quite a pipeline. Uh, do changes in the healthcare industry play a big role in that thesis, or do you think Obamacare's ends, sticks around, does that really not affect uh, Eli's outlook? There are others in the healthcare arena that will be much more affected by changes in the, uh, the Affordable Care Act, and uh, so we don't think Lilly is one of those. Gotcha. Uh, another stock? Uh, another stock would come from our analyst based in Korea. Um, there's a company called LG Chem chemistry, chemical company, number one in Korea, that has a very significant operation in Michigan. Uh, they produce the battery packs for Chevy and Ford um, for those electric vehicles. Uh, they also do a great deal of their R&D in Michigan. Uh, so we look at this company as one that has a good valuation. Uh, the Korean stock market has not performed as well as some others. And we think that there are some interesting factors behind this company. And ADRs, or, or you have to invest in this Korean market? Um, it does have ADRs. Um, I will be recommending um, in our Barron's Roundtable not the ADR, uh, simply because 
I don't want to get uh, involved in the discussion about the, uh, the currency impact. One other portfolio question. Uh, that's the stock side, but it's a very tricky world on the fixed income side with the expectation, at least, that rising rates uh, will be hurting mm -hmm. bond yield, or, or bond yields will go up, but of course it'll hurt your bond portfolio. Uh, how do you recommend people play that? We are not enthusiastic about fixed income. Um, clearly, if somebody is a very good security selector and can find some um, names in terms of some fixed income securities, for example, some corporates, uh, some in the credit area, even some specialized loans, that might be appealing. But when we take a look at treasury securities, when we take a look at high yield securities, we're concerned about two things, interest rate risk for both, but also in the high yield market, which has performed so well for so long, we see that the credit spreads have now come lower. And when that happens, when there's not that margin for error, they're going to be subject to interest rate wins as well. Those yields go up those bond prices tend to go down. Thanks very much, Abby.